There was a lot of bluster behind Theresa May's Brexit statement yesterday. The headline news is the government is now planning for a no-deal scenario. It should be pointed out there is a big difference between announcing plans and actually putting them in place before the March 2019 deadline. It should also be noted that walking away without a deal, even if the planning had been done, would be economically ruinous. This was not mentioned by the PM yesterday. Her statement to MPs yesterday delighted and disappointed the Brexiteers in equal measure. They were pleased she has started planning for a no deal, though why they should welcome economic Harry Carey is beyond reason. And they were aghast she has accepted European Court of Justice jurisdiction will continue during the transition period. This, of course, was one of Boris Johnson's red lines but principles are rarely the Foreign Secretary's primary consideration. Eagle-eyed Brexiteers will also note the Treasury White Paper on our future customs arrangement suggested the transition period, far from being a time-limited two years, another Johnson red line, could be open-ended. How long the period is should be determined simply by how long it will take to prepare and implement the new processes and the new systems that will underpin our future partnership, the paper says. It also offers two possible scenarios for the new customs arrangement. One is politically impractical and the other logistically impractical. The first solution says we could replicate identically the current customs arrangements with the EU, including abiding by their tariffs. This undermines those who believe our leaving would give us some form of commercial advantage and breaches, surprise, another of Johnson's red lines. The second suggests we use IT and number plate recognition at our ports to ensure lorries can smoothly roll on and roll off cross-channel ferries. This is uncosted and, given successive government's experience of major IT schemes, wildly ambitious. For completeness sake. The fourth Johnson red line was no paying for access to the single market which remains a moot point. As to whether the government will remain in the single market and the customs union during transition, that is as clear as mud. Perhaps we will get some clarity when Mrs. May appears on LBC Radio at 5 p.m. While we are arguing about Brexit, Spain today faces a moment of truth when the Catalan president Carles Puigdemont makes a statement on the path ahead following the referendum. Mr. Puigdemont will be wary of making a unilateral declaration of independence. Such a move would prompt Madrid to suspend the Catalan parliament and impose direct rule pending further elections. This in turn would fuel anger among the nationalists that could spill into violence on the streets. It would also cast Catalonia and Spain into economic turmoil. Mr. Puigdemont also has to speak to the die-hard nationalists on whose support his coalition government depends. If he is not sufficiently forthright on secession then they could withdraw their backing leading to fresh elections. A busy day in the Commons sees Jeremy Hunt take health questions. The head of NHS England Simon Stevens is also giving evidence to the Health Select Committee at 2.30 p.m. It would be a surprise if today's Care Quality Commission report was not raised at both events. The Business Select Committee has summoned the bosses of Uber and Deliveroo to talk about the gig economy and Business Secretary Greg Clark is making a statement on Bombardier. If that were not enough there is also an emergency debate on the government's refusal to accept votes on opposition motions as binding. Nicola Sturgeon is also making her leader's speech at the S&P conference in Glasgow.